Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, and we're here with geography. Now we're on to here, here, body. I'm just gonna let a uh, here, body. Right. I'm gonna let a uh, uh, the other Paul, the host of Geography Now, tell me how to pronounce this because I'm not quite 100% sure. So I apologize. Uh, so, anyways, uh, yes, on to a new country, which I know absolutely nothing about. I'm sorry, absolutely nothing. I'm starting clean and ready to fill my head with a bunch of knowledge about you guys. So, I guess. Let's just jump into it, right? Before I do, please hit that like and subscribe right below. That helps me a lot, you know, so. And I uh, hope you guys continue the journey through every country in the world, alphabetical order, remember that. And uh, yeah, so anyways, let's get to the video. Do -do -do. Full screen. Here your body, your body. Find it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Three, two, one. But Kiribas. It's pronounced Kiribas. For some weird reason. Here, boss. Here, boss. Okay. All right. Here, I was way off. I'm sorry. I was way off. The T-I makes an S sound. Here, boss. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey, everybody. I'm your host, Barbs. Woo! Finally, we've added another country to the Oceania playlist to keep Australia and Fiji company. How are you guys doing back there? We're doing just Fine! Great! I am so excited because Kiribati is a country that very few people even know exists, which makes the perfect transition I'm into... Sorry. I didn't know. When it comes to time zones, no country compares to the sheer confusion that is Kiribati. Let's explain. Okay. First of all, the country is made up of 33 island atolls and reefs. A third are located in the region of Micronesia and two thirds in what is technically classified as the oceanic wow. region of Polynesia. Over 40% of the landmass belongs to Kiritimati Island, the largest atoll in the world, which has all those webby pockety lake things going on, making it look like a weird alien claw or like a slimy insect with... Yo, Ken, what do you call those bugs with like pinchers on their butts? Yeah, dude, I'm pretty sure you've seen them. They're Here like the we. Oh, earwigs! That's what yes. they're. Oh, yes. I hate those things. By the way, Kiritimati is the. I've seen those before. They're pretty nasty. <laughs> but I was out of right earwig. Yes, sir. But wow! So you guys are a whole bunch of islands. That'd be kind of cool though. So you can go visit your neighbors. Like, oh man, we gotta drive. Like, I'm gonna swim or take the boat five miles down the uh, down the ocean to visit. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I know you. Never mind. I'm sorry. That was a horrible joke. Anyways, back to the. Uh, Oh, earwigs! That's what they are! Oh, I, I hate those things! By the way, Kiritimati is the native way of pronouncing Christmas. So, yes, this place, this alien claw slimy earwig larva island is called Christmas Island. Not to be confused with Australia's Christmas Island. The country is made up of three main island chains. The 16 Gilbert or Kiribati Islands. The Phoenix or Rawaki Islands, made up of eight atolls and two submerged reefs. And the Line Islands, eight of which belong to Kiribati. And the remaining three, Palmyra Atoll, Jarvis Island, and Kingman Reef belong to the U.S. as minor outlying island territories. Then you oh. have the little offshoot Banaba Island that just kind of wandered off and doesn't really fit into any of the chains. The capital of the country is located on Tarawa Atoll, where about half of the entire population lives. By the way, quick side oh. note, the word Kiribati is just the pronunciation of Gilbert's in the native language. Most of the inhabited islands have airstrips for small domestic flights. However, the country has two international airports, the largest one that most people fly into, Tarawa's Bondriki International, and then there's Kiritimati's Cassidy International, served by Fiji and Hawaii. Outside of yeah. Tarawa Island, the next most populated area are Tabuakea on Kiritimati and Makin Village on Makin Island, each with only about 2,000 people on them. Now wow. here's where things get really trippy. Kiribati's island chains pass through both the international dateline and the equator. This makes them the only country in the world to straddle across four hemispheres. And technically, wow. on cloué mon territoire d'outre-mer. Oh my, France, just let them have this one, I swear. Now you would think that being <laughs> past the anti-meridian would mess up the country's week schedule. I mean, two thirds of the country would be stuck in yesterday as the remainder would be forever in Tomorrowland, right? right? Well, in 1995, they got sick of the confusion and they changed it to UTC plus 13 for the Phoenix Islands, which Tonga, Tokelau, and Samoa respectively joined, and the furthest extending one, UTC plus 14, just for the Line Islands, which are just south of Hawaii. Caroline what? Island being the furthest east of these, even though nobody lives on it. Both of these overlap the UTC minus 10 and 11 time zones. So that means that every morning, Kiribati is literally the first country to start every day, or at least the Line Islands of Kiribati. Uh, didn't you say Japan was the land of the rising sun. Ah, good observation. 
Kieran, but Kiribus is the land of the first dawn. Oh, shut down! <laughs> <What>? <laughs> You're so good what? at this, Keith. Which is weird because the same sun later rises on some islands further west, like American Samoa, Widway, and Niue. Yet, since they lie on the UTC minus 11 zone, they are considered to be 25 hours behind. And if anybody was living on the uninhabited Howland and Baker Islands and Johnson Atoll in the latest time zones, the UTC minus 12, they would be considered 26 hours behind. So that means, see if you can keep up with me, every day for technically two hours, there can be three days happening at once. So, anywho, wow. 21 of the islands are inhabited, all 16. 16 of the Gilberts, Banaba, one in the Phoenix Islands, Canton Island, and three in the Lion Islands, Taraina, Tabuairan, and Kiritimati, the alien claw slimy earwig island. Finally, each of the inhabited But at least they, I know it looks weird in that, you know, but at least you're all in the same time zone now. That would be extremely confusing when you're talking to family and friends. I'm, or you're, I guess, I guess it would be because, you know, other countries have a lot of different time zones, but. I don't know. I think it makes it this makes it so much easier all in the same time zone. So I think that's pretty, that's, that's really cool that, that happened. Yeah, that looks like an earwig itself right there. Tabuairan and Kiritimati, the alien claw slimy earwig island. Finally, each of the inhabited islands have their own council with three on Tarawa. Whew! All right. Well, some notable places to check out in case you decide to come to Kiribati might include places like Fenua Ura, the curvy parliament building, the National Library and Archives, the Koinava and Sacred Heart Cathedrals, the Atari Karawa and Buraneita wow. traditional meeting houses, the ruins of Malden and Starbuck Islands, the Aurore and Butaritari navigational stones, Manra Island prehistoric settlement, the Nake Island. Mare Temple platform, the abandoned post office of Orona Island. Oh, and if you play <laughs> Call of Duty, Makin Island was featured on World at War. World War II remnants. I'm sorry, but that, that, that that's funny. Like, one of your awesome, like, go-to sites for, like, as tourists is the abandoned post office, man. <laughs> that's great, man. Oh, man. There it is, man. The abandoned post office, dude. Is that haunted? It's gotta be haunted, right? Corona oh. Island. Oh, and if you play Call of Duty, Makin Island was featured on World at War. World War II remnants at Betio. And literally almost everywhere you go, you'll be within a few meters of an amazing beach, typically laid out on rich, unspoiled coral reefs. Like, yeah, literally the beautiful. entire width of some parts of the country are only like a few meters wide. Let's dive wow. more into that in. Okay, let's just get it over with. Like many other Pacific Island nations, Kiribati is kind of dealing with the problem of sinking. Like, already two islands have been swallowed by the Pacific Ocean. Even though the country spans a domain of over 2 million square kilometers of ocean, the land area only takes up about 800 square kilometers. Kiribati is one of the world's lowest lying nations. So that's like part of like, oh, I guess I should let him explain, but part of like global warming, you know, because, you know, oceans are rising, so if you, you know, your, your islands aren't exactly, you know, if they're not high above sea level, then they're going to end up disappearing. That sucks. I'm sure he's about to explain that though. <laughs> the land area only takes up about 800 square kilometers. Kiribati is one of the world's lowest lying nations. In fact, when Hiram Bingham Jr., a Christian missionary, first translated the Bible into the native language, he had trouble translating the word for mountain since the natives had never seen one. Now here's the thing. A lot of islands in the Pacific are a little different from most of the other islands around the world because they're very skinny. The word for these types of flat, wispy, enclosed, ovular types of islands are called atolls. And Kiribati is mostly made up of them. The highest point of the country being only 81 meters above sea level on Banaba Island, which is actually a raised coral island, so they got lucky. Otherwise, the majority of the rest of the islands only rise about two to six meters above sea level. This is kind of a problem because rising sea levels, or king tides as they call it, in the past century have completely inundated parts of the coast, forcing people to either move out or build seawall barricades along their homes. Some estimate that in about 50 years, the problem will be too devastating and the majority of the people in Kiribati may have to be relocated abroad. One excellent way some residents are battling the problem, though, is through mangrove planting. The bushy plant are able to grow in seawater and act as a natural barricade for waves. On top of that, there are virtually no rivers and only a few small ponds that store up fresh water. Most people here get fresh water through wells or boreholes, rain collection, and there are two small desalinization plants on Banaba and Tarawa. Otherwise, seawater is mostly used for bathing, laundry, and toilets. I mean, it's okay if you have salt in it if you're not drinking it. The majority of their energy also, unfortunately, comes from diesel-run generators. This causes another problem for them Man. as they have to have a constant supply of import that's required to keep their country afloat. Only about 60 
60% of the entire country has access to electricity. On top of that, solid waste yeah. management is a problem with the little space they have. A recycling center opened up on Tarawa and island-wide cleanup campaigns have been initiated. However, it's a slow process. Jeez, everything you said sounds a little kind of morbid. Do you have anything positive to say about the country? Yeah. Ken, why are you not operating the camera? I just... I was... I was so, you know, I was going to say, like, dang, man, you're making me depressed, dude. Like, the islands are going to be gone in, like, 50 years. And you know, nowhere to put their trash. They need gas, you know, because, you know, a lot of them don't have power. But, man, come on. Bring us the positive stuff. What kind man. of morbid? Do you have anything positive to say about the country? Ken, why are you not operating the camera? I just wanted more lines in the episode. Oh, you like being on camera, eh? Well, well I mean, you know, I mean, if hey. you, whatever you like, I mean, whatever. Okay, you know what? Fine. Here, take this next part, okay? See if you can keep up with the teleprompter. Uh, okay. For one, the entire Phoenix Island chain is a protected marine area, the third largest in the Pacific after the Picarant Marine Island. And Hawaii's Papa... Papahana, Papahana Umo Kaukea Marine National Monument. Papahana Umo, Papahana Umo Kaukea. <laughs> Papahana Umo Kaukea Marine National Monument. Ah, there, there, you got it. Yeah, it's not as easy as you thought it was, huh? Nah, 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 I got, I got this. Now, of course, as an island nation, they have more than enough fish and seafood to add to their diet. Some specialties being crayfish and giant clam. They are known for producing lots of toddy, which is made into a sweet syrup. They could also be fermented into alcohol. Otherwise, they harvest giant swamp taro, breadfruit, of course, coconuts, figs, and pandanus. <laughs> And anus. Woo, for such a small country, we're getting a lot of cool info, aren't we? And it gets even more fascinating once we talk about people. Which brings us to... Do, 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 do. I don't know how you do it, like... That's going to be the video. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I figured you'd be a lot of seafood, though. Ah, good job, man. Let's give Ken a round of applause. All right, I'll take it from here. By now, you can probably feel how unique Kiribati is on the surface, but when you meet all the actual people, it's like a whole new level of wonder. First of all, the country has about 110,000 people, and unless efforts are made to fortify their land, the 60% of the country that is under 30 years old is speculated to possibly be the last generation to live on the islands before wow. potential relocation. The vast majority of the people at about 97% identify as being the e Kiribati branch of the Micronesian ethnicity, similar to their neighbors like the Marshallese and Palauans. The remainder is made up of a small community of Polynesians, mostly Tuvaluans, and imatang, the word for Westerners, or whites, mostly of British and American descent. They also use two forms of currency, the Kiribati dollar and the Australian dollar. They use the type I plug outlet, and they drive on the left side of the road with whatever little roads they do have. E Kiribati people come from a long history of seafarers that have historically inhabited the island since possibly around 3000 BC. Culture-wise, it's a little unique because Kiribati is kind of like the bridge between Micronesia and Polynesia. Don't get the two mixed up, mm. though. At one point, they were even united with Tuvalu under the British, but after independence, the Tuvalu were like, okay, look, Kiribati, we're Polynesians. We don't even understand your language very well. Plus, we want to stay a commonwealth, so we're peacing out. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not going to stop you. Go ahead. Okay, I don't even need your permission, okay? I was going to leave anyway. Yeah, okay. Fine. All right. Okay, just so you know, I'm leaving because we're too different from each other. I get that! <laughs> Maybe a little exaggerated, but you get the point. The country is mostly bilingual with both the e Kiribati language, or Gilbertese, and English. Gilbertese is a Micronesian language, part of the Austronesian language family, a cousin of Micronesian and Marshallese, but not Palauan. Palauans may be their cousins, but they have a whole different language thing going on. The alphabet only has 13 letters and no S's, so they substitute the S with a T-I for some reason, hence Kiribati. In Kiribati, it's kind of a big uh... deal to identify yourself based off of which island you're from. People in the Gilberts are kind of like the metropolitan business folk. The Line Islands are kind of like the cool adventurous people. And the very few Phoenix Islanders on that one inhabited island, Canton, they're kind of seen as like the mystical shepherds of the protected marine sanctuary. Like many other Pacific <laughs> Island nations, towns typically erect a traditional multifunctional communal meeting structure here known as a maneaba. In Kiribati, they're typically high ceilinged, open walled, thatched roof gazebos that host various events and meetings. The majority of e Kiribati identify as Christians, about half being Catholic. 40% Protestant, and the remainder being mostly Mormon and Baha'i. Yeah, the Mormons have quite a distinct presence in the Pacific Island nations. History will take way too long to explain, but in the quickest way I can put it, earliest inhabitants come in migrating possibly from other Micronesian and Polynesian areas, various wars and battles with neighboring nations like Samoa, Tonga, and Fiji, intermarrying with said Samoan, Tongans, and Fijians, which in return may have introduced certain cultural traits. This guy sails by, they take note, word spreads, tons of missionaries, Chinese and Samoans, merchants, and castaways stop by. The British were like, okay, time 
to make this a protector along with the Elise Islands. Meanwhile, the Phoenix and Line Island chains were operated under the US, then they weren't, then they kind of were again. Tons of natives move into the Phoenix and Line Islands. The Japanese came in and tried to take over. Big mistake. Huge battle called the Battle of Tarawa. Japanese leave. Controversy with the United States and UK using areas around Christmas Island for nuclear bomb testing. Self rule in 1967. Finally, in 1979, they break away from the British, gain independence. Four years later, the US relinquishes the Phoenix and Line Islands to them. Overcrowding problems forced about 5,000 people to move to other islands. International Dateline moved, UN membership, and here we are today. Now, one thing that makes Kiribati stick out from the other neighbors is that historically, they were known for having a very unique warfare and martial arts culture. Back in the 17th and 18th centuries, explorers noticed and documented curiously dressed warriors with armor made of thickly woven coconut fibers and helmets made wow. out of resilient blowfish carcasses, topped with a wide array of weapons like jagged broadswords lined with shark's teeth. That actually looks so cool. It's like the wow. ultimate oceanic island warrior getup. I love it. Otherwise, fascinating, colorful dances, music, and traditions live on. Dances typically involve quick head movements that imitate a bird. During celebrations, you might witness the Stirere stick dance, especially on the biggest holiday, July 12th, their Independence Day. The Ikiribas also live by a unique code called Bubuts. It's a system which you kind of have to let someone borrow something if they ask you, and it's shameful if you refuse their request, unless if the context of the situation really says otherwise. And the reason why is because okay. generally Ikiribas are very communal. They have to survive together on a limited space that's washing away. You can't not help someone who's drowning in the same boat you're on. Getting help yeah. from friends is definitely something ingrained in the mindset of a typical e Kiribati person, which is why they like to reach out to other countries quite often. Which brings us to... Kiribati may have had a few periods of conflict, both direct and indirect, but since independence, they've been diplomatically reaching out to pretty much anyone that realized they existed. Fiji is considered a good friend whom has sold them land and said that they will accommodate if the people need to be relocated in the future. They made Aww. an agreement of leasing out land to Japan for building a spaceport on Christmas Island, but the plans were abandoned in 2013. They used to have relations with China, but then in 2003, they wanted to befriend Taiwan as well. China got angry and said, you cannot have both of us and severed ties that very year. Their closest wow. family would be, of course, the other Micronesian states, the Federated States of Micronesia, the Marshall Islands, Palau, and the two US territories of Guam and the Marianas. These countries share similar cultures, languages, and history as well. Their best friends, though, would have to be Australia and New Zealand. These countries give them the biggest amount of trade, business, and supply them with the most aid. Many programs are in place to help the locals apply for relocation on their lands if need be as well. In conclusion, Kiribati is a small yet spread country loaded with history, armed with shark tooth sword wielding Melanesians that are yeah, literally fighting cool. off the ocean. And with that done and said, our next set of twins are coming up, the Koreas. And since we go alphabetically, North Korea. It's coming up next. Yeah, that, that helmet and like, like it was a sword or whatever. That was that was that was cool, man. Like if you're like a, an enemy and you see that, man, you're not gonna be happy. You'd probably be turn around and run the other way. But anyways, man, I like I said, I didn't know you guys existed. I apologize, uh, but I'm really awesome and cool now that you do exist because, like I said, that's awesome and cool because you guys are pretty neat out there, except for. You know, it sucks that eventually you guys are going to be swallowed by the ocean. So I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, you guys are really cool. I, I, I hope maybe, I don't know, maybe there's some kind of plan. Because you know how, like, China is building their own islands out there, you know, but, like dumping sand. I mean, it would be kind of cool if they can kind of do that for you guys over there, you know, import a bunch of sand around the islands to kind of keep, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe. And I hope you continue the journey with me to all the countries. We're on to the Koreas next, North Korea. This should definitely be an interesting episode. And, and definitely check out all the other content of you know wars and all that stuff. It's really cool. But anyways, thank you. Like, subscribe. I'll catch you guys in future videos. You guys are awesome. Peace. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'm out of here.